Hello everyone, CSWort here, and in front of me I'm trying to figure out which fuel is best to use in a furnace array. Now unless your furnace array requires a certain fuel to be smelting at a certain time, really whatever you have the most abundant of is probably going to work best for you. But if you are trying to optimize, well, let's try and figure it out. Starting from the very beginning, a regular furnace takes 10 seconds to smell an item, so every hour we can get 360 items smelted. Now a blast furnace and smoker can do it in half the time, but are limited to their respective categories but you would end up with 5 seconds and 720 items per hour. In most furnace arrays, you can only have one side of the furnace being exposed to fuel, although all four sides can actually be fueled. Hoppers or droppers can be used to push the fuel into it, however, hoppers are the better option since they don't require being powered like droppers do with either a clock or a detection system. Speaking of drop uh, hoppers, they can push and pull at 9,000 items per hour, so when we divide that by the 360, a single line of hoppers can fuel 25 furnaces. That is with a fuel efficiency of 1, meaning the fuel being used can smelt one item, which is only just the wooden tools, bow, and crossbow. On to the first fuel option, we have a log from a tree farm, which can be crafted into various items or turned into charcoal. Charcoal does give you 8 uh, items smelted per log, however it does require smelting beforehand. The highest efficiency if you're going to craft is a plank or slab, where you end up with 3.5 items smelted for a single log. Now if you're on bedrock, slabs have the same efficiency as planks, meaning you end up with 7 efficiency. There's literally no reason not to use slabs in the bedrock edition. Now if you want a more reasonable approach, to where you're not going to lose any fuel efficiency by starting a smelt you go through the first plank and then you're on the second plank and your second item is not in the furnace you are losing out on that fuel efficiency and when it comes to using sticks you would always end up with a perfect amount because it's two sticks per smelt so sticks are probably a more reasonable approach if you need it moving on to the second fuel source that is bamboo originally i thought that sticks were the better approach because eight bamboo turns into four sticks However, 9 bamboo turns into 1 block of bamboo, into 2 bamboo planks, and that turns into 4 sticks, meaning you lose out on 11% efficiency. But if we back it up a step and leave it at the planks, you're actually 33% more efficient using just the planks. So yeah, I recommend using planks from bamboo. Then you have your extra excess from mob farms and from mining, coal from wither skeleton farms, blaze rods from blaze farms. This is just free real estate. If you have it, you might as well use it. Lava cauldrons are the highest efficiency, allowing you to smelt 100 items with a single bucket. However, it's the worst if you start smelting one item and don't put anything else in the furnace, because you wasted 99% of what that lava bucket was capable of. And lastly, we have kelp. Kelp does give you the bonus XP, however, it does require water. Smelting of all the 9 kelp into one kelp block, and each kelp block does have to smelt 20 items. So you end up with a bit of a spectrum where you need 2 sticks to smelt a uh, a single item, a plank can smelt one and a half, coal and charcoal can smelt eight, blaze rods can do 12, kelp block can do 20, and lava bucks can do 100. So with all that being said, if we take a step back, we can do a little bit of math here. So on these signs, I put down what the fuel is, and the second line lists how, many, how much of that fuel we need per furnace per hour. And then the second line lists the hopper limit, meaning how many furnaces can we fuel with a single line of hopper, single line of ho hoppers, given how powerful that fuel is. And lastly, we can, it is the typical farm rates, what we can expect. Now the first one, uh, we're a little bit skewed with the farm rate, so we'll get there. But charcoal, we need 45 charcoal per furnace per hour, and a single line of hoppers can fuel 200 smelt furnaces. And then when it comes to the fuel, uh, the rates of a farm, there are so many tree farms. On the low end, you have an azalea that can give you 500. There are some that give you half a million. So even if we're on the lowest end at only 500 logs per hour, that's still well able to keep up with at least 10 furnaces. 10, if not 11. Meaning the more efficient your tree farm, the better off you'll be with the furnace rate. However, that again does require more smelting. Planks, on the other hand, are crafted from the logs so they don't need that smelting and we need 240 planks per furnace per hour because of this a single line of hoppers can only fuel 37 and a half furnaces 
Now, if you can't have half a furnace, so either you round up to 38, and over a long enough period of time, your furnaces run out of fuel, or you round down, and you technically lose out on a little bit of efficiency. And again, going over the typical rates of the farm, it could be anything. So, good luck figuring that out. And when it comes to sticks, you need 720 sticks per furnace per hour. A single lot of hoppers can fuel 12, only 12 furnaces, which is the least by far. But you do need an absurd number of sticks to keep up with it, so it does make sense. If we look at bamboo, originally I, again, was looking at just the sticks, so 720 and the 12.5. If we let bamboo grow naturally, we actually need 85 bamboo plants for a single furnace. However, when we bone meal it, we only a bone meal bamboo can fuel nine, a little over nine furnaces, 9.38. And if taking the step back here, we can see the math for that. 3.4 minutes on average per growth, so we get 16.7 bamboo per hour, letting it grow naturally. And we divide that two to get into sticks, we end up with 8.3. Taking that, divided that by 720, we end up with 0 0.0116. A single bamboo plant can fuel less than a, about 1% of a furnace. So very bad. And 1 divided by 0 0.0116 gets us a little over 85, that's how we got to that number. Doing the same thing with the bone meal, we end up with 27,000 bamboo per hour. That's because, as I've shown before, you get 1.5 bamboo for every bone meal bamboo. Yeah, and you get uh, 18,000 items per hour for a typical dispenser. Uh, you get 27,000, dividing that by 2, 13.5 thousand six per hour, dividing that by 720 again, we end up with 9.38. So, more than, a little more than 9 furnaces can be fueled from a single bamboo plant if it's being uh, bamboo, uh, bone milled. But, taking the step back from that to look at the planks again, letting it grow naturally, we end up with, again, same numbers as over there, 240 for the uh, amount needed, 37.5 hoppers, but now we only need 66 bamboo plants per furnace. And if we bone mill, we can actually fuel 25 furnaces, which is quite a bit better. And here's the math. Instead of dividing by 2, we divide by 4.5, because divide by 9 to get the block of bamboo, but times 2 to get the bamboo planks. So 3.7 planks per hour, dividing that by 240 is 0 0.015. So 1.5%, a little bit better than the uh, stick method. So yeah, take it as you will. But one divided by that gets us a little over 66 bamboo plants per furnace. And same thing over here, 27,000 divided by 4.5 gets us 6,000 planks per hour, which is quite a bit now that I look at it. But once again, dividing that by 240, we can fuel an even 25 furnaces per hour for a bone meal bamboo. When it comes to mob farms, you're going to end up with quite a bit of RNG and dependability, dependence on mob cap and all that, so these ra the rates on those will vary quite a bit, but again, with coal, same thing as charcoal, 45 to 200. Blaze rods are better because you can fuel, you smelt 12 items per single log, or per single rod, so you, you only need 30 blaze rods per furnace per hour, and a single line of hoppers can then fuel 300 furnaces, which is the fe uh, best we've seen so far. Then we see lava buckets. Oh, oh lava buckets. You need 3.6 lava buckets to fuel a furnace per hour, so you need 4 lava buckets per hour. 2.5 thousand furnaces can be fueled from a single line of hoppers. This seems a bit absurd, but remember, each lava bucket smelts 100 items, and it's a non-stackable. This number seems skewed, by far, but it, it does, it's right, it just doesn't feel right. And actually this is incorrect on the bottom here because in order to keep up with it, we need to have two lava cauldrons per furnace. And how did I get to this number? Well, I actually had to do a setup in the back here. What we'd see is I had a scoreboard running and I would increase the ticks. So over a long enough period of time, the lava cauldron would be, be filled. And then I had a, another detection over here. We would see execute if it was a lava cauldron, run set a tell row of the ticks we then set it to a, lava, a plain cauldron and clear the ticks. Let that run for a long enough period of time, and then I copied the message from chat. So if we take that and put it into Excel here, what we see is all of these items, and then we just do a simple split by spacing, and we end up with the number of ticks here. I did actually have to skip one value here because it was a, it, it was like 191,000. 
and that was like twice the amount of all the other ones and it was just really skewing the data so yeah getting dropping that one out we end up with an exact average of 20 minutes so we could get three lava buckets per lava cauldron per hour which is pretty good however our standard deviation is so large 18.4 minutes meaning on max we could take two hours to get a single lava bucket but at quickest three seconds <laughs> it's all over the place there's just no consistency, but you do have to manually pull the lava bucket, which is a huge drawback. There's no way to automate that as well. And in case you were curious, in total, it ran for seven days worth of simulation. Now, going back over to Minecraft here, we can uh, clear that out. Going back over to Minecraft here. Yeah, sadly, because we need 3.6 or 4 lava buckets per cauldron or per furnace and a lava cauldron can only make 3 lava buckets per hour yeah you sadly need 2 lava cauldrons per little over 2 lava cauldrons per furnace sadly it just doesn't work and then lastly we have kelp and this one is a a, a really weird one we need 18 kelp blocks to fuel a furnace consistently for an hour meaning a hopper line can fuel 500 furnaces which is better than all the other ones except the lava cauldron. However, if we're letting it grow naturally, kelp needs 22 kelp plants per furnace. And when we bone meal it, we can actually fuel 111 furnaces per kelp. Well, that's if you're fueling the kelp furnaces separately. And here's the math on how I do all that. 8.2 minutes on average for the kelp to grow, meaning every hour we get 7.32. We get divide that by nine to get the number of blocks per hour. So less than one block per hour, Find that by the 18 needed, 0 0.045. Quite a bit better than the 1.5% uh, for the bamboo, but uh, yeah, you still need 22 kelp plants. And when it comes to bone milling, you get a one-to-one -one ratio of kelp per bone meal. So at 18,000 items per hour, divide that by nine for the kelp block, you end up with 2,000 blocks per hour. Divide by 18, you end up with a little over 111 furnaces per bone mealed kelp plant. However, if we let the kelp if we are having the kelp fuel itself, we lose not uh, 55, we lose 45% of the power because we're using 9 twentieths of the smelted kelp to fuel itself. So we end up with only 55% of efficiency, and we go from having 0.81 blocks per hour, letting it grow naturally, to 0.445 blocks per hour, meaning we end up with 2.47 or 0.0247 kelp or furnaces fueled per kelp plant meaning we'd actually have to have 40 kelp plants per furnace if the kelp, again, is fueling itself. And when it comes to bone milling, we end up with 1.1 thousand blocks per hour, divided that by 18, only 61 furnaces per bone, uh, bone milled kelp plant. Quite a bit of a drop-off, but it might be worth it. So, if we take a look at all of this in a simple Excel spreadsheet again, here is the layout that I came up with. In the first column is the uh, source of the fuel and then in the second column is the fuel itself so we have three sources of log which converts into charcoal planks and sticks uh, you get the point this is all of what we just went over if it requires bone meal and then these next few columns are mostly just what i went over on the signs over the last few minutes in the video column h is the ratio that you get so one coal or charcoal can smelt eight items i did have to i did decide to round up so that we can make note of uh, like char uh, planks needing two planks to smelt three items if you want to have a equal match and then here we have the rankings all right <clears throat> number one i think that planks from a log farm is by far the best yes it can be somewhat wasteful but it has the highest yield by far you don't have to smelt it down you can get absurd quantities depending on how good your tree farm is it just seems like it's the best option there is one drawback though, that is you do have to have a bone meal supply for a tree farm and a blast chamber to automatically break the logs if you're not going to do that manually. So even with those things considered, it still seems like this should be number one. And in number two is where I decided to place bone meal bamboo turned into planks. Again, it's only like the second or third best source for of a dist uh, from the yield. However, the distribution is only okay. If we were able to supply more furnaces at the same time, 
I, I would probably make it number one. But because you can get just such absurd amounts from a log farm, sadly, I'm just going to uh, bump bamboo down to number two. And then in number three is where I put the uh, bone meal kelp. Now, this does have one of the highest yields per single source. A single kelp plant can fuel 20, uh, 111 furnaces, or 61 if it's supplying itself. And it has one of the best distributions outside of lava buckets. But the main problem with kelp is you need to have another furnace array of just smelting the kelp. To keep up with a furnace array, you need another furnace array smelting kelp. <laughs> Two furnace arrays, one to fuel itself and another. So, yeah, that and you also have to have water for the kelp, meaning you can't build this in the nether. I'm just going to have to dock it quite a few points there. If it did not have those limitations, this would probably be number one. But sadly, I'm just going to place it down at number three. Feel free to argue in the comments below. And then number four is where I put sticks from a log, log farm. It is the optimal option for smelting, being much faster than bamboo again, but uh, not as efficient as the planks. And then number five is where I put the sticks from the bone meal bamboo. Again, it's the optional, but it really takes a hit when it comes to the distribution. Being able to keep up, a, a, a single hopper line being able to keep up with only 12 furnaces. Then, when it comes to number 6 here, is where I put... Uh, yeah, number 6 is where I put... Uh, actually, I'll change this right now, on the fly. Number 6 is where I'm going to put the charcoal from the log farm. It does need to be smelted, and it can be quite wasteful on fuel, but again, when you're dealing with large quantities, it really cancels itself out. You just end up wasting a lot more when it comes to using a single, uh, smelting a single item and letting the other seven eighths of the charcoal go to waste. Then at number seven is letting the bamboo grow naturally and turn into planks. You do need a, quite a few bamboo plants for a single furnace at 66, but it's not the worst we've seen. Then in number eight and nine is where I put the two mob farms, uh, placing charcoal, uh, placing coal from the wither skeletons a little bit higher because more people are going to build that for a skull farm anyway. Blazes are mostly meant to be an XP farm, but both of them are heavily RNG dependent, both on looting and the mob drops and the mob spawning. So you're not going to get super consistent rates out of those. And in number 10, that's where I put the poor bamboo turned into sticks when grown naturally. You need 85 bamboo plant, 85 bamboo plants for a single furnace. That is just such an excessive quantity. Now, if you're not running your furnace array constantly, a large bamboo, a large scale bamboo farm could probably keep up with that. But you might as well just go with planks at that point anyway. And number 11 is where I put, under the similar vein, kelp that's grown naturally. Same problems as the other kelp. You need another furnace rate to keep up with everything of smelting the kelp plants. But on top of that, you also need 22 kelp plants per furnace. And again, you can't have water in the nether, all that stuff. So I'm putting kelp at number 11. And in the last place, oh, oh poor lava bucket. What should we do with you? You need three buckets per hour, and you need two cauldrons to keep up with it. Even if we had it down to one cauldron per furnace, it still wouldn't be enough. Because, well, again, if you smell only one item, you've lost 99% of that power. And, I didn't mention it up to this point, but because they're non-stackable, you also need to collect them in a different way. And you need a return line. This is the only fuel where you need to return the holding container of the fuel to the player for the player to then again manually pull the lava from the lava cauldrons so in my opinion last place lava cauldron good if you are doing simple smelting terrible for a furnace array so again in number one log farm based planks in number two uh, planks from a bamboo farm and in number three kelp flocks from a bone meal kelp that is all i got for today Thanks for watching. Goodbye.